Hello everyone and welcome back to my live streamed hard career adventures in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.2. This is an edited for YouTube version of my May 16th stream and since it was live streamed the video bitrate is worse than I'd produce normally for my YouTube videos so apologies for that. Please do stop by on Twitch, I'm Tyler Rays there as well. My current plan is to stream Saturdays and Sundays at 1pm Pacific Time, 8pm GMT and Wednesdays at 4pm Pacific, 11pm GMT and I generally stream for two to three hours. Now on to my live commentary from May the 16th. Okay, well, let's time warp to the next morning at least. Though we do have a particular mission in mind, right? We have to rescue our Kerbal in Duna orbit. And I guess the simple thing to do is just to convert the mission that we launched, launched Guzber on. I mean, we know that can reach Duna. Uh, 32,000 with our current funds is not too bad, but we don't need all of the accoutrement that landing required. We just need RCS, really. How much mass do we save there? Only 0.2. I think we'll need some substantial RCS. We need to have a remote controller. Okay, well, I hope that clipping doesn't cause any issues. Let's see, where should I put the RCS ports? Probably, probably on these things. Ah, we need to unlock RCS thrusters. Definitely necessary for a rescue mission like this. And we probably need the reaction wheel on as well. Just trying to make this look right for our rescue mission. Hi there, Rodan. So, we are trying to rescue Guzber from from his perpetual orbit around Duna and of course get the science back let's not forget because Burr does have science available for us to retrieve so we've got a remote control part we've got and we'll have an empty pod we have a lot, probably too much mod propellant okay I guess this is what we'll launch to rescue him now let's see that mass that's fine The rest should be fine. Okay, uh, so, uh, Duna Rescue Mission. Okay, now let's get the phase angle right. Heat overlay displayed when flying a plane. That apparently causes memory leaks. Well, I haven't had any memory leaks with, uh, with that display yet. And uh, I don't know why I haven't got any memory leaks with that display yet. I have flown planes with it because uh, I d used it on space shuttle missions and still didn't have a memory leak. I generally have uh, my RAM visible to me while I'm playing the game just in case. So... Your plane keeps running left when taking off. Ah. Well, that... Uh, could be a landing gear thing. Uh, if you, when you, if you place the landing gear on the wing, that might not be good. Runway is not 100% straight. Yeah, that's true. But you want to make sure the landing gear is on some sort of stable platform. And the trick I learned from EJ's stream is uh, placing them on girder segments, actually, uh, so that they uh, they don't wiggle with the wing. Make sure you don't put them on the wings. Because the wings flex. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. So, let's get some lights on the vehicle and then we'll launch our rescue mission. Oh, well. Warp to next morning. Okay, I'll take it. Alright, make sure there's no Kerbal in. We've got a reaction wheel, we've got probe core. Alright, let's go. This is where funds as well because we will be trying to fill the two contracts here. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Why did it wiggle like that? That was a lot of wiggle. Hmm. That's concerning. But anyway, we've got two contracts here. Transmitter recover scientific data from space around Duna and from the surface. And uh, guzber has got both of those. Alright, uh, throttle is up. SAS is on. And I hope that wiggle isn't an indication of something bad that will happen. Blader 100, mop propellant 120. That should be enough. 
Okay, let's go. Turning a bit to one side here. Try and nudge it a little bit towards the right direction. So again, if you're just joining in, we're trying to rescue a Kerbal who is currently stranded in orbit around Duna. Yeah, I stranded him. It wasn't a contract thing. We sent him to land on Duna, but it turns out because the LV-909 doesn't have the, fu uh, the fuel efficiency it once had, its ISP is really bad in the atmosphere. I miscalculated how much Delta V the craft had and so he didn't have enough fuel to get back so we had to leave him in orbit around Duna and we trust we gave him enough food just in case this sort of thing would happen right? I'm sure we did I wonder what that explosion was on the side there whoa 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 it's turning no 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 Ah, oh, crap now why are you doing oh, I knew we didn't have that much control there's a lot of side explosions going on right now. Um, if we could get back to prograde, I can probably keep this going. Okay. We've got some spare fuel. I mean, we're carrying enough fuel to land on Duna with this. And we're not trying to land on Duna. So, it's just a matter of making sure it doesn't actually... Well, it's... Trajectory is not good right now, and it doesn't have much thrust-to-weight ratio. Uh, I might have to turn RCS on in order to keep this. Uh, you can see my yaw. I'm trying to get to prograde right now. I'm not trying to keep the nose up. Oh, there we go. Don't worry. Okay, you guys are just in stunned silence or something. Oh, crap. All right. Come on, come on, come on. Still with the flippy, but I know, I mean, I guess I could have slapped on, uh, I should have slapped on some fins on this one. Knowing that I didn't have the reaction wheel control, I should have done that. But now that it's launched, it's launched, let's try and get it to what it needs to do. I don't have much good feeling about this, though. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, well, that's a really weird thing to do. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna sort of oscillate between my retrograde and prograde vector in order to keep it... Uh, well, actually, straight up in the retrograde vector in order to try and stop it from going down. I'll expend this stage... Okay, I think we've got it. I'll expend this stage right here and just point straight up. And then the Poodle will have to take care of the rest. Poodle's got pretty good thrust to weight ratio right now. The key was actually killing some of the horizontal velocity. Horizontal velocity kept me flipping. Once I got rid of some of that, it was possible to catch it. Okay, no time to waste. What, it would be sort of ironic if we sent this over and it turned out that this couldn't get back. So, some, nope. So maybe next time mining ship to get fuel. <laughs> well, we have to unlock the technology first, right? I'd love, I'd love to send a mining ship out, but we don't have the, the technology unlocked. Career mode and all that. Okay, well, anyway, we're gonna make orbit. The question is whether I've got a good bunch of stuff here. Little Kerbal stuck in orbit for years. Oh god, rescue ship is here. Oops, out of fuel. Well. Out of fuel on this stage, definitely. Okay, let's continue. Houston, are you kidding me? <laughs> but let's do some calculations before we actually have that eventuality, shall we? 
I don't want to see that happen. I don't want to waste time. I mean, if, if it turns out that we don't have fuel, we can just leave this in orbit and wait for another rescue that we will have to do. I mean, uh, we've got contracts to rescue Kerbals all over the place. So we could just leave this here and rescue whatever Kerbal uh, we need to rescue with those contracts. Like around Minmus or around the moon or whatever. Because <laughs> apparently I'm way past the point where I can rescue a Kerbal around Kerbin. Uh, they don't give me that contract anymore. Okay, well, we've got 2,393. Transfer to Duna takes, let's say, 1,100, just for safety's sake. Um, transfer back should take about less than 1,000. Um, so we don't have much Delta V. We, we could use the, the mod propellant to do all the rendezvous, but it's actually pretty close. Uh, yeah, it's about, it's pretty close, thanks to the fail with the launch stage. Oh heck, let's try it. If, uh, if the little Kerbal is stuck in orbit for a little bit longer, uh, it wouldn't hurt. But let's try this out. It's close, but doable. Okay, we've got an encounter. No problem. Uh, let's see if I can tweak it into something even better. Oh, okay, that's worse. <laughs> so, we will rescue a Kerbal around Duna. That should give us the confidence to do rescue Kerbal missions around Minmus and the Moon. Of course, with our luck, as soon as we do this, it's gonna have rescue a Kerbal around Paul or something. Uh, rescue a Kerbal around Elu and or Moho, right? That would be... That would be just the thing that the contract system would come up with for us. Have I considered an e-flyby to boost back to Duna? No. <laughs> Not while streaming. How about that? Uh, yeah, that would take a lot of tweaking. And I'm worried that, yeah, I mean, that's something where if I could cut it out of the video, all the tweaking I have to do to get that sort of thing right, and all the calculations I have to do, uh, uh, besides, I'd probably have to strand the Kerbal around Duna for a little bit longer. We'd have to wait for that kind of alignment to take place. It can't be too much of a gap between the Eve transfer and then the Duna after that, for that to work. And anyway, uh, heading over to Eve to go to Duna, that's not very efficient anyway. Because after all, the Delta V to get to Eve is about the same as Delta V to get to Duna. Okay, I'm gonna have to create a new maneuver node to get this right. Let me... This is probably wasting a lot of fuel, okay. Uh, yeah, actually... Maybe a maneuver there would be best. Because we're not going to be hitting at the ascending node, we should probably correct inclination anyway. And we'll use RCS for that. Okay, that should be close enough from from that vantage point. All right, on to mid-course plane change. Let's see what's actually happening. Okay, I think the next course adjustment has to be in Tuna Sphere of Influence, especially since we've got an Ike encounter here. You know how that is. All right, so well, we'll continue on this view. Okay, it looks like the Ike encounter is after we approach. Now, the question is, what's our inclination with respect to our target craft? Which way are you going around, target craft? Uh, okay, that's what I was afraid of. He's going around the, the opposite direction. Okay. Okay, so we're going for 24 here. And we'd like uh, inclination right on, in line with our target. Though we're not going to get that. That's about as good as we're going to get. Can someone explain Mach something to you? Yeah. Okay, so Mach is the speed of sound in air. And as uh, PL Spirit said, on the surface, it's about, uh, I don't know which, which system you want to use, but 
Uh, I, normally the way I... Because normally you hit Mach 1 at about 8 kilometers in altitude with a rocket, uh, the way to remember it is that's about 303 meters per second. Uh, so 303 meters per second at 8 kilometers altitude. So it goes down the higher you go up. So at the surface it's like 343 meters per second and then at 8 kilometers it's 303 meters per second and you go higher and higher where the air is thinner the speed of sound propagates less until it doesn't move at all. So in space of course sound doesn't move at all which is why you can't hear anything in space. So that's basically how it works. So uh, it is something that changes. It's the speed of sound. Remember sound is just little atoms knocking into each other and so if you have fewer atoms they knock into each other slower and of course sound propagates very quickly in a solid so um, actually the speed of sound through a wall is like 3000 but they also dissipate the sound that's why you don't hear so well it goes through it real fast yeah denser the medium the higher the speed all right, looks like we're well configured for keeping solar power on the way in. We are at 23.9. Hopefully that'll have the same effect. This is a similarly shaped vehicle, so I expect similar effects on aero braking. Here we go. Check your crash log. It said dynamic heap allocator out of memory. Yeah, you ran out of RAM. <laughs> you ran out of RAM. There are no mistakes in KSP, only opportunities to rescue. Well, assuming your Kerbal's actually survived. Alright, Scuzzbury, you better hope this works out, otherwise we're gonna have to take uh, another few years before we can send one out to you. Fortunately, we do have funds. Thanks to contract fulfillment, we've got 800,000. Though, we need to save up. Because... Because we need to unlock the R&D building. We've gotten all of the technologies we can un unlock with uh, less than 100 science. Now we need to unlock the R&D building in order to be able to unlock stuff with more than 100 science. Alright, so we have managed to get into orbit. We, we almost had a little encounter right there. But it's still bringing our orbit down a bit. So 24 kilometers, good aerobraking altitude around Duna. I approve of this aerobraking altitude. Okay, I think I'm just gonna do an adjustment at this descending node here. I don't know, it looks like I'm gonna have to do the inclination adjustment separate from the... Well, we can boost up to a safe orbit at least. I'd like to do all the burns at once, obviously, just for efficiency's sake, but that ain't happening. It's a pretty, pretty big adjustment. Let me see what I can do with my propellants only. Dumping the mob propellant will make the uh, liquid fuel more efficient anyways, since we'll have less mass we're carrying around. Do I ever stream the building process? Yeah, well I've been doing it uh, for this series, though none of this is uh, complicated. I, I showed how I put this together. I mean, I just modified the lander, right? And the lander, I, I showed how I built the lander, and I, I did that on stream. Actually, I was planning to do that on Twitch before 1.0 came out. I was actually planning to do all my building process on Twitch, because I never put it on the videos. But it's something I take time on, so I'm, I figured I might as well sort of get credit for it. Uh, so yeah, uh, I was thinking of doing that, but then 1.0 came out and then I started career mode. That must be after. Yeah, that's after we pass it. Okay, good. Speaking of maneuver nodes, uh, yours just quit working when you got into uh, yeah, so I have the moon. Yeah, that happens. That happens all the time. Just like they said, go to the Space Center and back. That didn't work. Um, well, quit and get back into the game, that's all I can say. But that happens. I've, I often have to just use the markers and that ball to figure out what I want my new maneuver to be. 
Okay, let's see. Nothing there. Nothing much there. Alright, one kilometer it is. Okay, so we're gonna head out over here and then try match speeds. Imagine how pissed the Admiral was when he turned off his starting <laughs> the Destiny <laughs> Galaxy and Rebellion. Why is in this? Yep, yep. Yep, basically. Don't forget the science. Thank you for reminding me, Lauren Dex, but uh, uh, I, I might still forget it, so uh, keep that thought in mind. Missed that. What happened? Oh, yeah, uh, there was a proton launch uh, just, uh, just within the past 24 hours, and the third stage failed. The third stage, I had to look into it. No, 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 not the supply ship, just the last 24 hours. It was launching a Mexican satellite, mainly. It's got, it has secondary payload, but uh, mainly a Mexican satellite. And uh, it looks like the third stage engine's vernier thrusters, the equivalent of our, of our verners, if you will, uh, the maneuvering thrusters uh, had an issue. And so that is what caused the problem there. They, they went awry, the whole thing ended up crashing into... Uh, close to the border of Russia and Mongolia. So the Proton, for those who don't know, is actually a pretty large launcher. It's, it carries 20, 20 tons to low Earth orbit. More than 20 tons. And it was used to uh, construct the Russian end of the space station, in fact. So... Not a small thing for that sort of vehicle to fail also unpleasantly uses some of the most toxic fuels imaginable. That's not good either. Not when it fails, not when it explodes or decides to come back down. Science, yes. Thank you. Remember to science, remember to science, remember to science. <laughs> Okay, but I like to park myself within five meters and really get in there. We're also on the opposite side of it, which I don't like. It's old tech. Well, yeah. I'd love to see what a new tech uh, RCS system would look like. I, I really... That's something you don't get much information about, RCS systems. I wonder... What kind of refinements could be made to RCS? Fine control. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Ah, crud. Okay, uh... Stop that. I want a caps lock. I'm not used to using fine controls yet, and so I keep hitting shift. Okay, I think I can do this from here. Come on. Right, all right, now, science, science, remember to science. Okay, Gusbert, EVA for me. Slide down a bit. Take data. All right, we have taken the data. Do we have anything else on here we needed to take? Thermometer. No, I think that was it. Okay, all right. Sorry if I'm not talking right now, trying to remember how to do this. All right, let go. Jetpack, down a bit. Okay, grab. Ford. Alright, he's in. Alright. Now I need to check whether this is a good situation for him. In other words, whether we've got enough Delta V. Any other signs needed from anywhere else on Duna? I don't know, uh, let's just double check whether well I guess I guess we haven't done this yet but let's keep data just in case we have 1185 Delta V that should be enough let's I guess we have to hop back to space uh, space center anyway since we have to wait till the proper sorry guys we're gonna have to leave you in orbit around Duna for a little while longer because we have to wait for the proper transfer time You'll bet 10 cents this will result in a space rescue with 1,185 Delta V? How? We shall see about that. 
Yeah, I'm at Duna already. No, I, I, not only am I at Duna, we've landed a Kerbal on Duna, and we are having to rescue him because I mistook the Terrier's C level uh, atmospheric ISP. So we didn't have enough Delta V to bring our Kerbal back. Also, uh, it took a little bit more to land him than I thought. Uh, okay, well that looks about right. Let's try it here. You actually do math and stuff for this game. Um, if you want to. I want to. Uh, here's the thing, guy makes vids. If, if you want to make your rockets as small as possible and as efficient as possible, you do math. If you don't care how big you make your rockets, uh, you, you don't have to do math. <laughs> you just have some engines and go. Yeah, fine. That's 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 another way to play. A little bit more unnerving for me. Let me put it that way. I I I don't like the heart attacks that could potentially give me. Wow, these two missions drifted apart quite a lot in that time, huh? There are mods for math. Yep, yeah, that's true. KW Rocketry updated today. I have not messed around with it. Um, KW Rocketry. Uh, I yeah. I, I want to see those engines again. It's the engines mainly. The rest of it, uh, I'm not too interested in because the fuel tanks uh, with a modded install, I just use procedural parts. Uh, but the engines are nice. I like the engines. Oh yeah, the SRBs too. Yeah, the best SRBs. I love the look of the SRBs in the KW Rocketry pack. What mod for math? Yeah, Mechjeb and Kerbal Engineer Redux are the two big ones. Mechjeb uh, has other functionality if you don't want to be... I mean, some people find that too much stuff to deal with. So if you want a more stripped down version with just the uh, calculations that, and the numbers you need, then uh, Kerbal Engineer Redux is the thing. Why am I so averse to SRBs? Uh, because, well, especially in this game, uh, in the stock game, they're underpowered. Um, in real life, they have a lot more thrust, and that's what they're primarily used for. They're to get you off the ground quick, and you, yeah, it, it there's not as much of a benefit to them in the stock game right now. I always want to make, uh, make sure I know what causes game crashes. First of all, people always ask me about uh, what might be causing it. Second of all, uh, I'm pretty sure that every bug that exists I'll eventually, eventually encounter. Yeah, of course, I'm trying to learn the math myself, so... So that's a thing. I'm actually... I've got some rocket science books. I've got one where the Ford was written by Werner von Braun himself. Uh, it, it's actually a rocket science book from Rocketdyne, from the 60s. And so I'm very excited about that one in particular. Uh, unfortunately, downside of that is they always use uh, American, you know, Imperial units, so it's all pounds. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's basic computer commands. What's wrong with Imperial? No, nothing's wrong with Imperial. Well, this one thing wrong with Imperial: slugs. Slugs. Slugs is wrong with Imperial, but otherwise. It's just a matter of having to convert it to what I use in here, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, well, it's not confusing to me. I remember the conversion factors like the back of my hand, right? So, I mean, I've used both systems for so long. Slugs. Slugs are the unit of mass in the Imperial system. Didn't know that, did you? Well, I know that because they actually use them in this book. <laughs> Yeah, pounds is a unit of force. Pounds is not a unit of mass. Slugs is a unit of mass. Slugs is the unit of mass in the pure system. Pounds is weight. Weight is force. How did he come up with slugs? Uh, probably something to do with artillery. I don't know. I don't know if you know, uh, artillery... A slug is, uh... Where's got? A round of artillery. Uh-oh. It's not going to let me uh, click on my... Come on, I want to click on my blue orbit. Ah, uh, it's only got to let me click on the... This happens. This is another thing that happens. 
Okay, well, I'm going back to Space Center so I can get the... Be able to create a maneuver node. Nope, it's not letting me create maneuver nodes on my current orbit. It just wants me to create maneuver nodes on the purple orbit. Okay, this this calls for test burns. I'm going to do test burns. No, okay. I'm using RCS. So I'm just going to burn the RCS in a direction until I stop getting any benefit from it and then I'm going to try other directions okay now it's going up again alright pressing L that gets it down uh oh moon encounter well I guess we could let's go like that let's go like that and then figure it out once we get there alright so on to Kerman Sphere of Influence okay what's the real situation here Okay, that's too far. Well, let's just do some RCS test burns. I think 30 kilometers should do it. If you land on launch pad, I'll give you winning... <laughs> yeah, if I land a launch pad, I'll go get the... I'll have the winning lotto numbers, don't you worry. Why don't I st stream a soundtrack? I'm, I'm working on that, but... Um, yeah, just trying to figure out what I can do, right? Because it's not so much about getting the VODs muted. Uh, it is about... Because I'm going to cut this and put it on uh, YouTube. I'm going to have to figure out what YouTube will not dig me on. And YouTube's content management system is uh, much, much worse than what uh, Twitch does. So, OC rem Remix. Yeah, I've heard of that. Where you can get all copyright free music. Um, I'm a little bit selective about music. So, I, and I know, I, I was looking, I was listening through Kevin McLeod stuff. Um, so, I've been picking out tracks from Kevin McLeod uh, since he wrote, of course, the music included in Curled Space Program are his as well. Uh, there is also the fact that I can actually write music, so that is another thing that I have to sort of... If I had time, that would be something I would do. Okay, so we're on re-entry. Gusberg Kerman trying to make it home safely after being stranded in orbit around Duna for quite a while. Uh, this might bring him straight down, might get him into a safe orbit. My guess is probably it's going to bring him straight down. How long is quite a while? You want Kerbin time or Earth time? Uh oh, hold on. Uh, uh oh, we've got problems. We've got problems. Um, oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. Uh, this is bad. Is it just me, or is the re-entry heating not as bad as it needs to be? Because that... Okay, I'm not going to say anything until Gusber is safe. I can't ditch the 99. The thing will collide with it. And we don't have any... We, we lack maneuvering. But... Uh, I think we're alright. Yeah, at that point I was afraid that the whole thing would smash into each other. Okay, now we will ditch the 909. And now we can maneuver safely, sort of. Okay. So panel sort of hot there. And to see the pod, I'm going to turn on the temperature overlay like that. Turn off those just in case. Yeah, the re entry heating, that should not have worked out. Gusber should have been fried. Sorry, Gusber, I mean, you know, just saying, Gusber. Yeah, I decided to flip the other way around, which caught me by surprise. The service module. 
service module should have been heavier than that, I thought, but whatever. Uh, aerodynamics, sometimes weird. Okay, we can pop the parachute. Okay, we, well, I can see the coastline. Looks like we're relatively flat, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, we're low enough, so it's not going to be a mountain. Um, but, uh, yeah, as unfortunate as Gusber was to be stranded around Duna for years, uh, it looks like he was lucky here. Okay, uh, let me turn off the overlay because it causes bugs. Okay, recovering vessel. Okay, so we brought back 158.4 science. We uh, got 67.1% of the funds from the pod back. Couldn't bring back the the service module, but uh, Gusberg gained 19 experience to advance to level 3.